We are literally picking up where we left off because we are finishing this thing this week. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society. I can't get the cap off. This week, we are finishing this thing. I am wasting no time because where we are starting is we are gonna put our turf on. That's gonna be our grass texture, which is gonna be great. Once we have that done, then we can move on to the next step, obviously. That is definitely where we are starting. Let's jump into it. So getting the flock on was easy. I just made sure to put blended turf green by Woodland Scenics down as my main color. And then I did an accent of the Storycraft blend, which is just obviously a mixture of my own creation. And then finally I used a light green, a fine light green from Flock and Turf as kind of my highlight color over the whole thing. That just adds that little pop of, almost looks like dandelions or something in the grass. But once I got all of that done, now I need to move on to painting the hand. I've been nervous about this for a while for a lot of reasons, but Drew came in to the rescue because he pointed out to me that this doesn't need to be a metal hand or a stone hand, as cool as both of those things would be. In my world of Tresina, there's actually this substance called ethereal, which is sort of like broomstone in Exandria, Matt Mercer's world. In our example, it's like this light blue color. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is make this be a hand of pure ethereal coming up out of the ground. Not only would it be like a holy symbol of Arkanoth, but it could also be like a holy site where people make pilgrimages to because it is a, literally the site of a miracle ethereal hand of Arkanoth coming up out of the ground. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to pull out two colors that I'm going to end up mixing together. I pulled out Lead Belcher by Citadel and I also pulled out Speed Metal by Scale 75 and I'm going to take and cover the whole hand in those. I'm going to water those down first so it goes on nice and smooth. But then once I have that done, then I'm gonna try to put a contrast paint over the whole thing that's like a light blue color and see if that ends up doing what I want. It is only after I have put the second coat of metallic paint on this that I realize that I could have just clear coated it when it was silver and it would have looked like this. Might even look better. <laughs> Mistakes have been made. But this looks metallic. That looked mirror. This looks metallic. It's fine. It's, it's fine. So we are basically back to where we started, where it is definitely a little less shiny than the original was, but it does look a little bit more, for lack of a better word, textury. The next thing that I want to do is get this to start looking blue. So what I have is a way to do that, and I'm not positive that it's gonna go great, but we're gonna give it a shot. The first thing is going to be this contrast Talisar blue. I needed a blue color, and Aethermatic blue was not blue enough. So this is gonna be what we're gonna try. We're gonna mix that with the contrast medium. I'm gonna try to go like maybe a 50-50 hit of both of those. And then I'm gonna put in a drop or two of this white alchemy pearlescent paint from Scale 75. And we're gonna put that on there as well. We're gonna see how that works. Here goes our first test of it. Upon initial 
look, this is not looking great. We'll continue just to see if that opinion changes. So contrast paints are notoriously bad for doing smooth surfaces, and this is basically a smooth surface. What I settled on was when I put it on, I tried to put it on so that the brush strokes all went vertical or like followed the shapes of the fingers. That way it looked almost like veins inside of you know, some kind of gemstone or marble or something. I'll just be honest, it looks better on camera than it does in person, which is probably a good thing for YouTube, but not the best thing in the world for this being on my table. So the solution that I've come up with, I think to try and fix it, or at least make it livable, is I pulled out this Cobalt Alchemy, a scale 75 pearlescent paint, but it's got like this kind of bluish color to it. And what I'm gonna try to do is mix that with Talisar Blue and then just like a touch maybe of the White Alchemy. And then I'm gonna dry brush over the whole thing and we'll see if that maybe smooths some of those transitions a little bit. Let this be a lesson to everyone in the world. There is no problem that dry brushing won't solve. Holy moly. Like this went from looking not that great to like very acceptable and almost good. Like really, really pleased with how much of an improvement I made just off of the little bit of dry brushing that I did. I think that's where I'm going to leave the hand, which now lets me move on to the next bit, which is gonna be picking out little stones all across the whole thing and getting those painted gray, just to give a little bit more depth to the terrain. After grabbing all of the little tiny rocks, now I have my box o tufts, and we're gonna get this thing all tufted up, and I think that is gonna be the end of the road for this thing. So, a little bit of time lapse, and then we'll check in when it is all done, almost there. <laughs> I took more time putting tufts onto this thing than I have in any project I think that I've ever worked on in my whole time of crafting. But the thing that I can say definitively about this piece is that all of the weight, all of the patience, all of the effort of gluing all of these individual little tufts down, gosh, it feels very, very, very worth it to me. I think. This is the best piece of terrain that I've ever made. I can maybe think of one other piece that would be like on par with what this piece looks like. And albeit that one was a much grander project than this one is, but for this being all foam rocks and dirt ground texture and, you know, the addition of the hand and all that stuff, I just couldn't be more pleased. I know this is a little bit rambly, but I know that I've got a lot of time of cool glamour shots that I'm gonna be able to show off of this thing, and that just makes me super happy. So enjoy all of these glamour shots. I think this is actually where I'm gonna fade away, and uh, I'll let you just enjoy the fruits of the end of this project. If you could do all of the YouTube stuff, like like this video, leave a comment down below of what you think of it. Share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy it. That's obviously the number one way that you can help out any YouTube channel that you support. So anyone who does that, I'm just eternally grateful, but uh, that is gonna be it. So until next week, enjoy these glamour shots.